Hey everybody, uh, today I am reviewing a documentary from 2020 called Spaceship Earth. Now this is available currently on Hulu uh, and you can probably get it some other locations as well. I'm sure the DVD will be out soon. Spaceship Earth is a documentary directed by Matt Wolf. Uh, and it really is about the uh, experiment of Biosphere 2 in 1991. Now, I only have a vague recollection of this, you know, kind of hovering around the news. And uh, depending on your age, you may have never heard of Biosphere 2. Uh, there was kind of a parody, I guess, of it. You know, the fam famous uh, Polly Shore movie, Biodome, uh, kind of, I guess very tangentially relates to Biosphere 2. So what is Biosphere 2? So it was an experiment to see if they could create a self-contained uh, environment that would be able to kind of recreate all the aspects of uh, nature and life uh, in a domed environment essentially that you could take to space or you could uh, habitate other planets uh, and be able to bring, you know, plants and food and create oxygen and have all the different kinds of uh, terrains, you know, desert, forest, all that stuff. So they essentially sent in eight biospherians into uh, Biosphere 2, and they were going to be there, you know, uninterrupted, no outside influence, nothing in or out for two years that's the basic concept and then they were going to use all that data to figure out you know what worked what didn't work and you know continue this kind of uh, experiment to see if they could make these environments so that's the basic concept it kind of starts with all these little clips and news reports of them going into the biosphere too and then it immediately jumps back 25 years so that took place in 1991 they went in in 1991 and it jumps back 25 years so this is where I think the movie is really interesting in that it isn't, it is about the Biosphere 2 experience for sure. And that alone is really interesting. And especially if you've never heard of it or have no clue, I mean, it's like, what's this all about? This is, this is interesting. Um, but what takes it to the next level is by going back in time and showing kind of the creation of the group that led to Biosphere 2, um, it becomes very much more about a special kind of social movement and its passage through time. Now, what do I mean by, by this? Kind of the you know de facto leader of the group that ends up into Biosphere 2 uh, is this guy named John Allen. And he isn't, I mean, he's at some point they're calling him a cult leader, uh, depending on your point of view, or a guru. Uh, either way, he's kind of the coalescing visionary of this group. They all meet back in the you know, San Francisco hippie era, of course, where you have lots of collectives and artist communities. Um, you've got, you know, counterculture groups, all the stuff going on. And he was part of that. And so were some of the early members of this group. And they had a couple unique aspects to them. One is they were very, they were kind of oriented around theater to start with. They started this thing called the theater of all possibilities. And it was a lot of, you know, hippies and, you know, cockamamie outfits, you know, rolling around and making noises and all this stuff. Uh, but it also led to them believing that anything they could imagine they might be able to achieve. Once again, it's kind of that idealism of the counterculture movements of the 60s. And another unique aspect of them was that they were really not into drugs. So it allowed them to realize a lot more of their visions. Uh, and then what it does is it follows them through. So what did they do from there all the way to Biosphere? And there's a lot of interesting uh, twists and turns around, around along the way. I almost don't want to tell you, but there is one big project they do before Biosphere 2 that when you watch it, you're going to be like, oh, this group of uh, <laughs> harebrained hippies uh, just imagining they can do this thing when they're not engineers and they're not scientists especially they're not going to achieve this big project and they do achieve this big project before biosphere 2 and when you watch that that kind of gives you a context that's really interesting anyway if you're into history you're into uh, unusual and maybe uh, unknown uh, events from history uh, recent history 
Uh, this is a really fascinating documentary. And also for me, it's really a great look into the path of the idealistic counterculture movements from the 60s and how they realized and didn't realize certain parts of that vision as time went past. It's a really good look at like, you know, here you got in the 60s and then what happens to them in the 70s and what happens to them into the 80s and 90s and how does, you know, politics and social media change the way things are perceived and the way things um, do or don't come to fruition. How do the political forces come to bear and the economic forces come to bear on the idealism that they have in the 60s and what they're trying to create with Biosphere 2 and other things going forward? Uh, and then eventually it comes all the way to now and to where are these people now and what was the legacy of Biosphere 2? You know, what did work, what didn't work? Uh, I know I'm being a little bit vague, but I think discovering all those pieces of the puzzle along the way are a lot of the fun. On top of that, it is a huge percentage of uh, archival footage. So most of it is not talking heads, although there's a little bit of that in there, people who are involved in it. Uh, the biggest piece of this puzzle is archival footage that they shot along the way, all the way from those early days in the 60s, because as part of their, hey, if you can think it, we can do it, kind of an attitude, um, one of the members of their group became their filmmaker and their documentarian. Um, she said, says early on, you know, I didn't really know what to do. Uh, I got the, I think at that point it was an eight millimeter or 16 millimeter camera. Uh, and I just started shooting the stuff we were doing and you can see some of that rough early footage. Um, but that idea of documenting their progress as they went was a big part of their whole, uh, personality. So what is great about that is now you have documenting of all these things all the way from the 60s through the other big project I mentioned and into Biosphere 2. So you can see what was happening at the time and you can see the fashions change and you can see you know, what does and doesn't work. Uh, some of the personalities, there's a lot of interesting personalities here for sure. A lot of them have these weird nicknames. I, I can't remember them all, but there's a lot of cool nicknames that each of them has. Uh, so I would highly recommend uh, Spaceship Earth, uh, especially for people who are into you know, interesting aspects of history or unusual events that they may not have ever heard about or delved into. Uh, probably a four, to, four out of five stars for me. And the only thing that brings it down, I mean, what doesn't make it perfect is that I guess I don't, you don't get as emotionally attached to a lot of these characters as more interesting and unique and um, fascinating. But it isn't necessarily super emotionally engaging, whereas some of the best documentaries give you a great emotional arc or catharsis. Uh, this doesn't necessarily have as much of that, although there's a bit of that in there too. So uh, that was it, Spaceship Earth, and I will be back soon with another, probably another narrative movie.